If you like trawler style motor yachts, then I have a feeling that you will enjoy this boat tour. In this video, I will show you around this 21.6 meter steel explorer style yacht, which was built in the Netherlands in 2009 with a displacement of 80 tons and her CE category A rating, along with her impressive 10 millimeter thick hull tapering down to six millimeters. This vessel is designed for serious cruising. Her round bilge hull not only provides exceptional stability and smooth sailing, even in rough seas, but also enhances her fuel efficiency. This is another boat that I know that many of you have been looking forward to seeing, so I can't wait to show you around. Before I do, please don't forget to give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I really want to try and get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, if we can, but I can't do it without your help. Welcome back to the channel. If you love trawler style yachts and explorer yachts, you're gonna absolutely love this vessel. She is an absolute beast in terms of her capabilities. You could pretty much take this steel hull boat out in anything that mother nature can throw at you. She really, really is a capable machine. As I say, she's got a steel hull that is between 10 to eight millimeters thick. She has an LOA of 21.6 meters, a beam of 5.85 meters and a draft of 1.76 meters. She was built in the Netherlands, is a CE category A vessel and has a displacement of 80 tons. She's got a round bilged hull and I'm really looking forward to taking you on board and showing you around. Let's have a look around at the stern before we actually go on board. Paulster Rotterdam. This really, really is a commercial lined vessel, but as you'll see in a minute, she is made for private voyages. Her superstructure is also steel and is five millimeters thick. As I say, she really is a powerhouse of seaworthiness. Right, let's jump on board on the starboard side via this access gate. I'm gonna take you up forward first and I'll take you back round the upper deck before we go inside. As you see, as you walk along the starboard side deck, we've got plenty of space here. The bulwarks are providing lots of safety when it comes to when the boat is moving around in the rolly stuff. Nice big sturdy bulwarks here. And look, if we look aft, got the handrail atop the bulwarks there as well. Let's spin back around so we're facing forward again. I'm guessing you're gonna love what you see in the wheelhouse. And of course, we'll check that out in a minute. Over here on the starboard side, we've got the access out onto the starboard side deck. Grab rail over here on the left-hand side on the superstructure. So when you are punching through the big stuff, if you do need to come out on the upper deck, you've got plenty to grab onto as well. As you see this raised section here on the bow, you'll see the benefit of that in a minute when I take you inside. Let's go up onto the bow itself so I can show you the deck gear. So the boat has two anchors with two lots of 100 meter chain. Uh, the windlass is an electric one and obviously gives you all the power that you need to bring in all that chain. Look, we've even got a ship's bell there as well and a bollard on that bow, look at that. But if I sort of peer over the bow here, you might get a sense and appreciation of just how high up we are. Let's say this is a really, really capable vessel. And look, here we have the wheelhouse with those forward raking windows there, a searchlight, the radar over there on the port side of the coach roof, big old searchlight over there on the starboard side and look, a mast there, but without the radar, because as you can see, the radar is there. Right, let's head over here onto the port side. We'll head aft. I see a life ring there, look, ready to throw over the side, just in case someone falls in the water, which with bulwarks like this, you're not really going to, but it's always good to have it there, just in case. Big old sturdy door there, look at that. As I say, you're really getting echoes of her commercial kind of heritage when you walk around this boat and I absolutely love it. Let's walk back down to the lower section of this deck. So over here, we've got a seating area which you can obviously use to come and have some alfresco dining if you want to. We've got a table there that's under cover at the moment. And of course, this area can be covered off away from the sun as well. So if you want to seek a bit of refuge from the sun, get the awning out, sit out here, and you're in the shade. Right, let's step back down onto the deck. 
see the scuppers there, big old hefty scuppers. So if you do happen to get any of that stuff coming over the bow as you're plowing through the waves, it'll quickly wash off thanks to these scuppers. Okay, large boat deck here, as you can see, we've got a Conrad 350 rigid hull tender with a 20 horsepower outboard engine as well. The crane on this boat is actually capable of lifting 3000 kilograms. So as you can tell, you can get a big old tender on here if you wanted something a little bit bigger as well. But the whole layout of this deck is all about practicality. It's all about ease of getting around ease of tying up the boat alongside. If you happen to be operating this boat as an owner operator, which the current owner of this boat does with his wife. I'm sure many of you noticed that as a towing bollard. It's not actually used for towing. Um, from what I understand, it's something that the owner wanted on there because it really does reflect, as I say, the heritage of this boat and what she represents in terms of her styling and everything else. There's a crane under the cover there. I'm not gonna take the cover off just yet. The formidable deck crane on this boat is hydraulic. Right, let's head back over onto the starboard side. Get a rear view of that mast and look, big old SSB aerials there as well. Single sideband radio aerials. Again, that's another way that you know you're on a boat that's made for some serious passage making when you have those SSB aerials on a boat like this. Remember, if you haven't already, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel. Right, let's step into the wheelhouse. I'll take my shoes off. Over here on the port side, we have a raised seating area, a great place to sit down and relax. You could also use that as a berth as well uh, if you wanted to have someone up here whilst you're underway doing watch keeping. Over here on the starboard side, if I open up this door, you'll see we've got a day head in there. Let's close that door and spin around and show you what we've got in here. There's some storage space. Disarano, who doesn't love Disarano? Won't have one of them just yet though. Fridge there, let's shut that. Entertainment system controls there. Some more cabinetry with some storage space underneath that. I spin around so I can show you the view of this race seating area over here. Again, like I say, you probably could use this as a berth if you wanted to. The boat does actually have three cabins with a total of six berths. The interior is made up of a combination of teak and white floors and panels, which we'll see when we look around in a minute. The headroom on this boat is 2.2 meters. Up here on the overhead, we have an air conditioning unit, but the boat is also warmed thanks to a central heating cabola system, which is a KB4524 kilowatts. Air conditioning wise, as you'll see, she does have a reverse cycle air conditioning uh, comprising of four daking units and we'll check those out as we walk around. Over here if we come up to the helm position, oh, we've got our Furuno VHF radios here, got a remote for when you were bringing the boat uh, alongside using the bow and the stern thruster you can be out on the deck using that remote to do that. Obviously we've got the Simrad tiller control over here and all the other Simrad and Furuno nav equipment as it is in front of you now. Two multifunction displays here, one on the starboard side, one over there on the port side. Throttle control lever over there on the left hand side. And of course we'll be checking out the engine room a little bit later on in the video. And I'm sure you can imagine the engine room on this boat is very impressive. What I'm gonna do now is just sit on the captain's chair to give you a captain's eye view. As you can see, you can pull the actual chair back so you can get in there jump on your seat and if you want to you can move forward again so you're right up close to all of the equipment but yeah look at that view again we get a really good view of the angle of that bow here there's a control for the searchlight but yeah look if i pan around you get a really good all-round view let's pan around over to the port side actually so there's a picture of the owner's wife over on the starboard side so yeah, just out of respect for their privacy, I'll come over to the left-hand side instead. But yeah, what do you think of that view? And what do you think of this wheelhouse? This is a real traditionally styled wheelhouse and I absolutely love it. Both speaker up there so you can listen to your favorite tunes whilst you're underway. As you can see, this boat is kitted out with a comprehensive suite of nav equipment to ensure safe and efficient voyages. It features a Furuno compass and a multi-control display for ease of navigation. 
The depth sounder and log are both Furuno FI50 models, providing accurate readings of depth and speed. As you saw when it comes to comms, there are two Furuno HS2721 VHF radios, and the autopilot system is the reliable Furuno AP50. Okay, now we've had a look around the wheelhouse, let's head over onto the port side, and I'll take you down below. Look at the EPUB over there, essential bit of equipment if you're gonna be doing some serious passage making. Remember, if you need to update any of your safety gear, I do have an affiliate store on Amazon. You can find the link for that pinned in the comments and in the video description as well. But before I descend down these stairs, let's just have another look at the wheelhouse. Absolutely love it. For me, for someone like me that really does and always has had a passion for commercial boats, this is a real treat to be on this, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So here we are down in the galley, over here on the starboard side, we've got a Miele induction cooktop. Underneath that is a Miele dishwasher. I won't open that, I'm sure you know what a dishwasher looks like. Over here on the starboard side, we've got some portholes that can be opened up for some additional ventilation as well. As you can see, the cooktops are granite and we've got a stainless steel sink there. And we've got the fiddles on there, something that's really important. I'm sure if you've been at sea and you've been trying to cook some food whilst it's been a bit choppy outside, the fiddles are something that's really important. Over here, we've got a Miele combi oven as well. And to the left of that, we've got a L-shaped seating area. Yeah, I'm gonna call that an L-shaped seating area. So you can sit down here, enjoy your meal whilst watching your oppo cooking up some more scran if you're gonna be continually hungry like I normally am when I'm at sea. Uh, we look up here, we've got the skylight. And as I said earlier on in the boat tour, the race section on the bow lends itself to this copious amount of headroom down here. If I pan down, you'll see we've got a radiator over there. But yeah, really functional, open, airy space that could be filled with lots of fresh air thanks to the several portholes dotted all around. Right, let's spin around and I'll take you down below. So as I said earlier on in the boat tour, we've got three cabins on this boat in total. Now the cabins do share this shower, which I know isn't for everyone's liking, but obviously that's what the owner wanted when this boat was designed and I can understand why. If you don't mind sharing your shower with your guests, then why not? It saves space and gives you more room as well. As you can see over here on the starboard side, we've got a washer and a dryer. So you can get all your laundry done, toilet there, a big old mirror, give you a naval salute as we're on a commercial type vessel. But yeah, look, lots of space under here. Stow away all your cleaning gear and your other bits and bobs. Let's open that, there we go. And look behind this door, I've got a large heated towel rail as well. And look, if we look up here, we've got natural light coming in thanks to that window that can be opened up. And we've got another one over here that can be opened up as well. Right, let's spin around. I'll take you into the first cabin. So just for your orientation, there we have the bow forward. And over here on the port side, we have this first cabin here. As you can see at the moment, it is being used to store some gear. And if you didn't want or didn't need this to be a cabin, you could use this space according to your own preferences, really. Over here, look, we see there's another cold storage unit, or fridge, we call it. And look, another window up there to allow some natural light in. You've got a reading light over there on the bulkhead. And lots of storage underneath. Let's open up this hatch. I've not opened it yet. So let's open it together. Look, more storage there for your dry goods or whatever it is you want to stow away under there. Again, we've got a radiator over there on the bulkhead. Right, let's spin around. Right, before I take you into the owner's cabin, let's lift up this. What have we got? I mean, look how dry those bilges are. Look, no moisture down there at all. Dry as a bone. Right, let's close that. I'll take you into the owner's cabin. Nice, decent sized double bed there. Obviously got the air conditioning unit over there on the bulkhead. And we do have some indirect LED lighting on the overhead as well. So I can imagine at night time you get a really nice ambiance down here. Nice and chilled out. Seating area over here on the port side. And look, look at how much cabinetry you get to stow away all of your stuff in there. 
Let's have a look over here. All the switches for the lights, obviously, reading lights. Same over on the other side as well. And at the foot of the bed, you've got some more cabinetry for some more storage. I guess if you wanted to, you could probably turn that into a retractable TV. Put a TV in there that comes up and down as a touch of a button if you wanted to. I'm not going to open these wardrobes because the owner still has got some of his stuff on board. So, out of, again, respect for his privacy, we won't have a nosy around in there. Right, let's come out of the owner's cabin, head over onto the starboard side, and here we have the third cabin. Again, look, pop open some of these just to show you the depth of the storage on there. There's other air conditioning unit up there. Another window that can be opened up for some ventilation. And there's another one over there as well. As you've probably seen, we've got the engine room through there. So I guess if you did want to have a member of crew on board, this would probably be an ideal place for the crew member to get their heads down. As you can see, we've got a single berth there with some additional storage over there. Right, let me take you into the engine room. And look at this for an engine room. There's loads of space in here, loads of headroom. We've got a workbench over there. That is obviously over on the starboard side. So if you do need to do any minor repairs, then you can use the workbench with its vice over there. And look, you can get some fresh air down here as well whilst you're underway, which I think is really important because we all know how hot engine rooms can get. So here we have the single engine, a man 450 horsepower, 330 kilowatt engine. This beast will push the boat through the water at a maximum speed of around 12 knots with a cruising speed of eight knots. And at eight knots, she's consuming about 22 liters of fuel per hour. This engine, not that you would know by looking at it, actually has 2,750 hours on it. It's got a closed cooling system. And also this boat does have a bow and stern thruster as well. Both the bow and stern thrusters are electric Corkman 380 volt units with RMC controls. There are two manual bilge pumps down here and one 380 volt electric pump. And of course you've got emergency access out onto the upper deck or just another access point if you want it as well. The boat does have stabilizers as well. We've got fin stabilizers on this vessel. We peer over there, look, we can see the shaft. But look, look how clean it is. Very, very impressive. Well, the switch gear over there for the generator on that bulkhead. The boat has two generators, a dry exhaust John Deere 40 kVA at 1500 RPM unit and a Sol 6 kVA wet exhaust generator as well. In terms of her electrical installation, she runs on 24, 230 and 280 volts. When it comes to fuel, her steel tanks provide enough capacity for around 8,000 litres, which is around 1,760 gallons of fuel. She also has a steel fresh water tank that has enough capacity for several thousand litres of fresh water. The boat has two Victron battery chargers, which feed the three large batteries. But what do you think of this engine room? As ever, share your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you've enjoyed looking around this boat. I know it's not to everybody's taste, but considering my background in the Royal Navy, the RNLI, and considering the fact I used to work on fishing trawlers when I was a kid, I really do love boats like this. So I hope you have enjoyed having a look around, but let me know what you think in the comments. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devork Yacht Brokers for allowing me to come on board and show you around. At the time of making and uploading this video to my channel, this boat currently isn't for sale, but I'd encourage you to check out DeVault's website because they've got lots of boats like this that I'm sure will interest you. And the guys and girls at DeVault really are a great bunch. Remember, if you've got a boat you're looking to buy or sell, then be sure to check out my micro site. I've got lots of information on there that I'm sure you'll find useful. So feel free to have a look. You'll find a link in the video description and pinned in the comments as well. And remember, if you're looking to charter a boat anywhere in the world, regardless of your budget, where you want to go, whether it's motor, sail, Mediterranean, Caribbean, high latitudes, then please get in contact with me. I've teamed up with TJB Super Yachts so that I can offer you, my viewers and subscribers, the ultimate in charter experience. So it's something I'm really excited to share with you. It's something I've been working on for a long time. And it's a really great way of supporting my work and this channel. 
So if you want to find out more about that, then you know where to look. Head to the link in the video description or the link pinned in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I've got loads more boats coming up and I can't wait to share them with you. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you've watched all the way to this point. I really do appreciate it. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out the video that I made about this trawler yacht. You can find the relevant link in the video description. And be sure to also take a look at the video that I made about this custom built trawler yacht as well. Again, you'll find the link at the bottom of the video description.